So we're going to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and their offensive preview. They fired Randy Fitchner. And since they fired Randy Fitchner, that means that Matt Canada is now promoted to be their OC. And everybody's expecting the Pittsburgh Steelers to have a better season on offense now. They're minus 14 in the cap space. They have 14, they're $14 million under the cap space. So they don't have any right now. There are some roster cuts that can save them some money. Pouncey retired, which is what which which is what got them to negative minus 14. But Joe Hayden cutting him would save $13 million. I don't think they do that. I think they restructure his contract. But the biggest guy that you got to restructure is Big Ben. And I think they're going to restructure his contract. Big Ben wants to be a stealer. He said that he wants to stay because of that. I think they restructure his deal, and I, I, I'm predicting the Steelers will have about 10 to $20 million in cap space. And these are their pending free agents. You got Bud Dupree, Avery Williamson, Alejandro Villanueva, Matt Filer, Mike Hilton, Tyson Alualu, Juju, um, Cameron Sutton, James Conner, um, and Zach Banner. I think Bud Dupree goes, Avery Williamson goes, Villanueva goes, Filer goes, I think Mike Hilton goes, Tyson Alualu stays, Juju goes, and Cameron Sutton stays, and James Conner goes, and Zach Banner stays. Yeah, they they really shoehorn themselves with the cap here. And depending on what Big Ben's contract ends up looking like with the restructure, maybe they are able to keep one of those big name guys. But like the positions that those biggest, biggest names are at, do they really need to keep a lot of those guys? But I, obviously, it would be great to. You saw how good that defense looked. But Juju Smith-Schuster, you look at their receiving core beyond him, very deep. You look at Bud Dupree, you know, that, that defensive front is stacked. And they could still potentially bring in J.J. Watt on a pay cut. So a lot of those big-name guys I don't really see necessary to keep, especially looking at the cap moving forward potentially bringing in a young quarterback. They're going to have to think about paying a young quarterback. If they bring in Sam Darnold, maybe a guy who's been rumored to them, he's going to have to get paid in the next two years. So who knows what his number is going to be. So I think you're going to have to start looking at some of the smaller name guys. The one that I would bring back is Tyson Alualu. Beyond that, I really don't know that anybody else stays just because of how bad their cap situation is. And, it was crazy when I was looking at it earlier this season. I figured they would be able to keep at least one of those guys, whether it was Bud Dupree or Juju, but it just doesn't make sense for them where they're at with the personnel that they have. They're actually, although they're in terrible cap space, they're in a good place with their roster that they can afford to lose those guys and still compete. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you mentioned it. Losing Juju won't be that big of a deal. They have James Washington, Deontay Johnson, and Chase Claypool still. James Conner you can find a running back, so that's not a big deal. But, Potentially Benny Snell steps in. Mm-hmm. And Bud Dupree, that will be a loss. I don't think they can afford to lose Tyson Alualu at all. You have to keep him there. But when you look at the free agents, outside linebackers, Jordan Jenkins, Marcus Golden, Alden Smith, and Ryan Kerrigan. I Jordan Jenkins was led the, led the Jets in sacks for a couple years. He's not bad, but I think that the Steelers signed Ryan Kerrigan to their roster to be another edge rusher there. I don't think they go J.J. Watt. When you look at centers, since Pouncey retired, they desperately need a center, and there's a lot of good guys here. Alex Mack, Corey Lindsey, David Andrews, Ted Karras, and Austin Ryder. Because Corey Lindsey is younger, he's going to look to get a big payday. David Andrews, the same thing. I think Alex Mack is a realistic option and I think he will be with the Steelers next season then at inside linebacker when you don't have cap space you have to take you have to take chances on first round talent a guy who's a first round talent who hasn't lived up to his first round hype has been Gerard Davis an inside linebacker from Detroit they need another inside linebacker to compliment Devin Bush and I think Gerard Davis can do that he still has all the talent in the world and in a good system like Pittsburgh he can be very productive at tackle if they lose Zach Banner, you can get a guy like Kelvin Beacom to fill in who won't cost that much. At running back, they can get Jamal Williams. He's not going to get re-signed from the Packers, and that would be you know a good guy to get. 
and in the draft with the twenty fourth with their twenty fourth overall pick, I would say draft. I would say trade up and draft Trey Lance, but isn't that the reason that they got Dwayne Haskins? You know, to ultimately kind of be Big Ben's successor. I would love Trey Lance, but what are they going to give to try to move up? It's really up in the yeah. air. Then with the twenty fourth pick, you know, I think you need to try to get a center. But since in my off season they addressed that with Alex Mack. I think you go with running back and get Najee Harris with the 24th overall pick and get yourself a solid running back to get a solid running game. Or they can go tackle and get Tevin Jenkins. You can go either way here. But I just think that there's still a lot of good guys that can that they can get, especially veteran guys who want to win now. They can get on the cheaper side of things. Yeah, I, and I agree with you with the center position. I think Alex Mack is a reasonable option just because with their money situation, they're going to kind of have to go bargain shopping. I think that takes them out of the Corey Lindsley talks, especially because there's going to be a couple teams looking at him that I think can pay him pretty big money. So I don't think he makes much sense for the Steelers, although it would be a good fit. They do definitely need help at the center with Pouncey retiring. Alex Mack would be the guy for me. Um, in a perfect world, you could bring in J.J. Watt. But it just depends. Does he value playing with his brother that much over? Personally, I don't think the Steelers are a Super Bowl contender next year. Bringing back Big Ben, I thought he really started to leak oil down the stretch last year. And I don't see him improving. I see him getting worse from last season. So with the losses, I don't see them being a Super Bowl contender. Plus, they can't give him the money. So does J.J. Watt value playing with his brother that much? I think the draft is the most important thing for them. Uh, do you think, personally, do you think Dwayne Haskins is the successor for Big Ben? Or do you think, maybe not even if he is the guy, do you think they try and make him the guy? Are they going to go with him moving forward? Based on what I've seen so far, his immaturity and his on-field play, I don't. But he has a lot of talent. And I haven't seen him play with Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, Eric Ebron, and James Washington, and a good offensive line. With all that, can he be successful? Yes, I, I think he can be. With that much. With, it's very hard for somebody not to be yeah. with that much yeah. talent. Uh, the the only problem is I don't think, I don't, wouldn't even call it a problem, but I don't think they're going to be bad enough next year to get into a situation unless Big Ben gets hurt, knock on wood, hopefully he doesn't. I don't think they're going to be in a position to see what Haskins can look like on the field with those guys. So if there's a preseason, maybe you get a look at him, but... In the draft, maybe a guy you could target. I wouldn't advise it. Mac Jones in the first round. I'm not I don't like him at all. I don't think he's gonna be a good NFL quarterback, but the guy they could get at twenty four pro I I think he's gonna end up at twenty four like I think he'll be there at twenty four. People have said he goes to the Patriots, maybe he does. You could look at a guy like Trask, but I don't think that would be worth your while. Um they could beef up the offensive line at twenty four and go Samuel Cosme. Uh, I think the second round they could find some good value, whether it's Asante Samuel at corner where they could use some help, or that linebacker position we were talking about, Dylan Moses out of Alabama. He had a great college football playoff, so a guy that could fill into that spot. But I think the draft will be important to them. Maybe later on in the draft they could look at a guy like Kellen Mond to come in and be the quarterback of the future, but the, quarter, the, the quarterback situation is going to be the big question mark moving forward. I think it hurts them personally the Big Ben came back as much as you know. You want to bring your guy back, and he deserves another chance with his squad. It, it just doesn't make sense for them moving forward. So you're higher on Kellen Mond than Mac Jones? Personally, for the value, yes. Wow. I would rather take Kellen Mond in like the third or fourth round than Mac Jones with the 24th overall pick. I've seen Kellen Mond play Texas A&M a lot. I don't think he's anything special. I don't, I don't think, think he owns anything. I don't. Special. I don't think he. Kellen Mond to me, he won Senior Bowl MVP, but I think like that's not a big deal to me. A lot of guys who have not panned out in the NFL have won that award. Kellen Mond, after four years at A and M, I'm really not sure if he's a good or bad quarterback. And I know you've been mentioning Kellen Mond for a while, and I've been letting it slide. But you Just said, the, but you said you don't think Mac Jones will be a good NFL quarterback. I don't think uh, maybe maybe he'll be an average quarterback. I don't think he'll be a good quarterback. When you just look at the track record uh, of the quarterbacks to come into the league for the past decade or so, how many of them have not been mobile really whatsoever? 
and been successful in the league, like like really successful. I mean, Jared Goff would be the closest thing, and I'm not high on Jared Goff I at mean, all. I don't think that Mac Jones is going to be like fantastic or exceptional, but I think he can be a good backup quarterback or you know start in a good system with offensive talent, which is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think they go that direction because they have Dwayne Haskins, who's very talented already. But like, I just don't think Kellen Mond is good. I'm just saying for the value. I'm not saying straight. Obviously, if you're telling me straight up, I could have one or the other. I would take Mac Jones. But for the value, I'd rather miss on a third or fourth round pick than miss on a first round pick. And, you know, value wise. Now, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But this is my off. This is my team for the Pittsburgh Steelers, their depth chart. And I think this is a Super Bowl team, by the way. Big Ben, Najee Harris, Chase Claypool. I think he's the number one. Deontay Johnson, James Washington, Eric Ebron, Kelvin Beacom, Kevin Dotson, Alex Mack, David DeCastro, and Akora Four, who played really well last season. Their defense, Steven Tuitt, Tyson Alualu, Cameron Hayward, TJ Watt, Ryan Kerrigan, Devin Bush, Gerard Davis, Joe Hayden, Steven Nelson, Cameron Sutton, Minka Fitzpatrick, and Terrell Edmonds. I think that's a Super Bowl team, especially with Randy Fitchner being out and Matt Canada taking the reins as the OC, who he has a really brilliant offensive mind when he was an OC in college. NFL coaches were calling him, talking about play design, trying to you know get his ideas. I think this offense is going to really hit the ground running next season, especially with having an offseason now. They're going to hit the ground running coming into next season. Juju is not a loss for me. You know, James Conner, he's replaceable. And getting Alex Mack, I think they're going to be fine. You know, last year we thought they were for real. But the offense just stalemated because Randy Fisher was really bad. I mean, he was really bad. He didn't it didn't even look like he had a game plan half of the times. With Matt Canada, I don't think that's going to be the case. And with this defense being as elite as it always been, I think they always have a shot. Yeah, I, that lineup is, is a very good lineup. My only question marks would be, and and – Maybe I shouldn't be as quick to question him because I questioned Big Ben last year and he came out and proved me wrong. If he could play again next season like he did at least for the start of this past season, I agree with you. That could be a, at least an AFC championship level team. But is Big Ben going to stay on that level? And, and the other thing that I would question is how much better do the Ravens and Browns get? Because mm-hmm. we saw how much better the Browns got this year with the first year Stefanski at the reins and Baker Mayfield took a big jump. They got some moves to make this offseason. And if the Ravens can just beef up that offensive line a little bit more, get a weapon in there, wide receiver, who knows what the ceiling is for them. We saw MVP Lamar Jackson. You got a wide receiver in here, in there. You know, maybe he gets back to that form. So it's a tough division. Big Ben's getting older. So those are the biggest question marks for me. It's funny because the Steelers, Ravens, and Browns, all to me, if they make the right moves, are Super Bowl contenders. And saying that about one division is pretty crazy, but I think it's true. You know, Steelers with their defense, Ravens, they just need a number one wide receiver. Browns need to get a better defense. If they can make those moves, I think they can all be really legit in the AFC. 